Hello everyone and welcome back to the Movie Matthew channel where we talk about nothing else but movies and today I'm talking about movie psychopaths. I love movie psychopaths and movies involving psychopaths. I just love it, delving into their minds, it's so good and so entertaining. A lot of my favourite films of all time involve psychopaths. So I'm going to rank my top 10 for you guys, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. <laughs> Number 10 is Jake Gyllenhaal as Lou Bloom in Nightcrawler. This performance is unbelievable. Jake Gyllenhaal is unrecognisable in this film. He got severely overlooked by the Academy, as he always does. This was an Oscar worthy performance from him and his character is just insane. What I love, everything I love about Psychopaths is in this. Um, he only really loses his temper once in the whole film and it's that mirror scene which is just unbelievably well acted and just great i love that part it's probably one of my favorite scenes in the film but he's apart from that he's very calculating he's very calm and he just goes about his business he doesn't give a shit about the repercussions of anything he'll tamper with evidence he'll kill someone all just to get the perfect shot or to be the first on the scene to get the perfect shot he's he's willing to do anything to get what he wants nothing gets in his way and he's that's probably my favourite thing about him, he's very chilled, chilled, just very calm, you know, like I say, he only loses his mind once and it's very, he's extremely unpredictable, you do not know what he's going to do, say, next, he's just a psycho, <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal in this world class, what a performance and he portrayed Lou Bloom so well, the screenplay of this film helped it so well, it all been filmed at night, helped it so well, it just has everything. And Lou Bloom is number 10 in my psycho list. Number 9 is Kathy Bates as Annie Wilkes in Misery. This film is so suspenseful. It all really takes place in one room or at the house. But because Annie Wilkes, played by Kathy Bates, is so psychopathic, it makes it so intense. And only a true psychopath would make this movie so intense. You fear for James Caan's life so much. So many moments where you think, when is she going to fly off the handle? Is she going to come round the corner and do something to him? You do not know. The suspense built in this film is immense. And Kathy Bates just dominates the film dominates the screen. She's just so frightening, so unassuming at first. You think, oh, she's just a lovely lady, but then she slowly unravels to this psycho. She, uh, she just snaps at the littlest of things. She's willing to keep her, she's a crazed fan, who's willing to keep uh, Paul Sheldon locked away in a house, and she'll, she wants him there forever. She wants him to write books for her, just the way she wants it, don't care about anyone else, just the way she wants it, only cares about herself and she's willing to put her f absolute hero under the, under the strain just to satisfy her own selfish needs, she's nuts. The outbursts are so unwarranted and unpredictable, um, you don't understand why she's going off the handle or what she's going to do next, what she does do in this film is provide extremely weird ways of keeping James Caan's character in that bed and um, she's willing to do literally anything to get what she wants. She is psychopathic. Kathy Bates won her Oscar for this film and doesn't surprise me. It was a world-class performance and uh, everything about this film, the suspense, the finale, it's great and it's all because of Kathy Bates playing Annie Wilkes. That performance steals the show you know, it was always going to steal the show. You could have had the, you could have had Marlon Brando in that chair, and he would have got completely outshone by Kathy Bates. It was that good. It was such a dominant performance. Eats up the screen. What a film, and what a great portrayal of a psychopath. <laughs> Number eight is Kevin Spacey as John Doe in Seven. This guy is willing to do anything to get those seven sins completed. He'll do anything. And he's not even in the first two acts of this film, but when he comes in in the final act, 
He is there. He dominates the film. He is so good. Kevin Spacey is a world-class actor. Say what you want about him personally. He's a world-class actor. Especially in the 90s. He was just on a roll of these amazing films. And um, in this, it's one of his best performances. He's nuts in this. So, so evil. You know, his methods are just so sick. You know, the patience he has. The premeditation. Everything about his achievement of these seven deadly sins, you know, the way he kills people, the torture he puts these people through, he's willing to do anything, he simply does not give a shit about anyone or anything, he just wants to make him, like, make a name for himself, and he wants to complete these seven deadly sins, leading to a finale that is so epic, one of the best finales in cinema history, and it's all because of him. The guy is nuts. The conversations, you don't want him to end because his conversations are so good, his dialogue is so good. Kevin Spacey is such a good actor, and in this film, he smashes it. John Doe is just sick. You know, his methods are probably the most brutal on this list, but... Yeah, when he comes in the movie, he steals the show, he stays that way. I love his conversations, and he just wants to get rid of people, you know. And my favourite part of the whole movie is when he's um, in the back of the police car and he's telling you, oh, why have you killed all these innocent people? And he's telling you, they're not innocent, you know. This woman was a whore, this guy was a this, that, this, that. And he was explaining why, and it's so, like, dead behind the eyes while he's saying it. Just so sick and twisted, and... Yeah, the portrayal is done so well and that character is so memorable and really like has such an impact on the film. He's a great psycho. <laughs> Number seven is Rosamund Pike as Amy Dunn in Gone Girl. This woman is insane. This is the, the best example I could think and the most extreme example of someone literally doing anything they possibly can to achieve something. You know, to get what she wants, she's willing to do literally anything. The rape scene in this is so sick, so twisted, so premeditated and just calculating and evil. And that's the whole story of Amy Dunn. What I love about Amy Dunn's character though is she's just so unassuming. You don't have a clue about, you, you root for her at first, for the first like half an hour of this film you're rooting for it, you're like God, oh God your husband's such a prick, God he's doing this, he's doing that, what's she gonna do, you know, God I don't, I don't like her husband. Then that just very quickly flips on its head and she just turns and in, unravels into this evil, evil woman who's willing to do anything. You know, use her looks, her little good girl image to get whatever she wants. People believe this woman so convincingly. She doesn't look like a psychopath. You know, like not like John Doe does. Joe Doe, Joe, John Doe, you look at him and think, God, he's, he's something off of him. But with um, Amy Dunn, you, there's nothing. You, you look at her and you think, oh, it's just a normal woman who's had it hard, you know, and whatever. But in reality, she's evil and she'll do anything she can to achieve her goals. It is brutal, some of the stuff she does. And it's so premeditated. She's so smart. Everything is done for a reason. It's calculated. She's great. And uh, just a pure definition of a psycho. And it's acted so well by Rosamund Pike and... Yeah, what a performance, what a film, and yeah, great psycho. Number six is Anthony Perkins' portrayal of Norman Bates in Psycho. This was a very, very good performance from Anthony Perkins. He didn't really have much inspiration going into it because back then in the 1960s, these movies on psychos and blood and gore was simply not a thing. So he had to portray it without real, any real inspiration from previous films or not like it is now, you know, when you, you can see all these amazing performances of psychos. But yeah, he smashes this completely out of the park. He, He's so subtle in this film. You you think, oh, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, but he's got something wrong. And the subtlety to his character that he portrays is so, so nice to see. And he hides it so well. It keeps you guessing throughout the whole film. It makes you think, is it him? What What's what's happening with this guy? You know, he's had a bad childhood. He's been raised with very sick, weird thoughts from his mum. And um, he's got identity disorder. You you just do not know what what's, what he, what is, what is he going to bring to the table today? 
one day it could be like this, the next hour it could be like this. You do not know what's going to happen. It keeps you guessing. The performance is so good by Anthony Perkins. And that last shot of the film where he's looking dead straight at the camera with just, he's dead behind the eyes. Such a creepy, chilling image of a character. And he looks so twisted in that last shot. And it's such an iconic shot where he just looks sick sick <laughs> and uh yeah it's performed so well the movie is so intense and you don't know what's going to happen and um alfred hitchcock smashed this movie you know norman bates was probably my favorite character he ever created such a good psychopath so unpredictable you could fly off the handle any minute you do not know none of it's premeditated with him you just don't know what is going to happen so unpredictable he's a loose cannon and he's ready to blow. Such a good character. Love it. Number five is Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance in The Shiny. This is such an original performance. A lot of people at the time thought, well, it's I don't really understand what he's trying to go for, but it's only aged like a fine wine now, and everyone has realised how much of a world-class performance it was from Jack Nicholson. He's just so unpredictable in this film. He could fly off the handle any second and you wouldn't have a clue what to expect with this guy. He hallucinates, he's completely willing to kill his wife and kid. He do, It's either he dies or he kills everyone. There's no in-between with this guy. So unpredictable. He can't be saved. Once he's gone, he is gone. And it's acted so originally. You've never seen someone act a psycho like this. It's the facial expressions, the eyes, his, um, the shots from Stanley Kubrick of him, you know, when he's just like looking into space, completely confused, I don't know what he's doing. And um, it's just a great film. And when it's the climax of it, where he just keeps going off more and more and more of the handle, the way he speaks, where he's telling uh, his wife how he's gonna bash her brains in, he's coming up the stairs with all those weird movements. He's so, so originally acted. You'll not get a performance like this again. The way it's done, it's just so iconic to that movie and iconic to that character. It's um, it's just such a good film and he's so, so unpredictable. He acts so irrationally with no thought behind it at all. Um, he's just nuts. Doesn't care about anything else. Just wants blood. That's all he really wants. Um, the hotel does play a factor. The hotel starts playing with him and being trapped away there can kind of take away the fact that, yeah, some people could lose their minds like that, maybe. Not that much, but, yeah, he goes insane either way. And it's the hallucination. The guy's just completely snapped. He's lost it. Lost it completely. And uh, it's acted so well. And what a performance. And what a psycho. So memorable. Iconic at this point. <laughs> Number four is Christian Bale as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Now, this is a psychopath I love. The unpredictable nature of this guy is just insane. You do not know what to expect. He tries to hide his psychopathic tendencies, but he's always just tiltering on the very edge. He can't cover it up for much longer and it just explodes into this madness. You know, what really got me, what like really got me during the film where I think this guy's just nuts is when he's having sex and um, he can't help but just look at himself and tense in the mirror and pose. He, he only cares about himself and how he looks and his image and whatever. Doesn't care. He has no empathy for anyone at all. If he has you in his sights, he'll kill you. He doesn't care. So unpredictable. And um, his dialogue is so so entertaining. And uh, Pat, I mean, Patrick Bateman's acted so well by Christian Bale. He smashes this. His scream with the blood on his face, the chainsaws, the blood, the confessions, everything about him is so good. And uh, yeah, like I say, just uh, I mean, the narration of him throughout this film is so good too. And that. He's probably my favourite part of the film. Uh, you can hear him talking about all these things and how regimented he is and how perfect his life is. But on the inside, I mean, you can hear him, his narration of his mind. And you're thinking, God, this guy's insane. What the? Why is he even thinking like this? And yeah, he's always tilting on the edge. Completely unpredictable. Such a good psychopath. And the movie's great. The performance is great. The psycho is great. It's just an overall very, very good film. <laughs> 
Number three is Sir Anthony Hopkins. His portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs in particular. What a performance. This is Oscar winner. It's just brilliant. Like this portrayal of a psychopath is so sick and so twisted and in my opinion is perfect. The eyes say it all his movements everything about his character is acted so well it's so convincing this guy's behind this like this screen and is in this maximum security prison but you still fear for anyone who's talking to this guy ex-psychiatrist he kills people with dialogue wears them down and you he's probably the smartest on this entire list he wears you all down to the very end and when he is released that's where you just think what is he going to be capable of doing now he's the, only, he's the only cannibal on this list and that's a very sick thing to get into he's very smart and he's willing to get out of um, any situation and take you into this weird where you don't have a clue what he's going to do, his methods are very sick and very twisted and he simply doesn't care, the guy's got a screw loose, he's very smart, he's an ex-psychiatrist but he's got a screw loose and he's willing to kill people just by talking to them and he wears people down, when he's out, he's out, he's willing to do anything to get away, he keeps you guessing all the way through the film, you have no idea what he's going to do next and he's just such a good psychopath, an unbelievable portrayal, um, technically probably one of the best performances I've ever seen, I know he's number three on the list but that's just because I prefer the other two but this performance from Anthony Hopkins is world class and to be honest I don't think anyone could portray that character any better than him ever, it's just that good. Number two is Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight. A lot of people probably would have expected this to be my number one but it is my number two but that doesn't mean this isn't absolutely unbelievable. This character just wants to cause pure chaos, he'll turn anyone He'll drain anyone, he'll do anything he can to destroy the minds of these people, to kill them, wear them down, all only for his own satisfaction. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about being captured, he doesn't care about being killed, he doesn't care about how anyone would feel about the situation. He has no remorse about anything. The guy is just nuts. Like Alfred says in the film, he doesn't care about anyone else. Some people just want to watch the world burn and he is that guy. Chaos is his middle name. He's just insane. Joker is such a good character. He's probably the best comic book villain ever made and this portrayal is definitely one of the best portrayals we'll ever see. And I don't think we'll ever see a Joker performance as good as Heath Ledger's. He won his posthumous Oscar for this and he deserves it. He's absolutely world class in this film and I don't think anyone could ever match the levels of this performance, it was just that good, so chilling, and he's just, by everything about him, the hysterical laughs, the movements with his mouth and his tongue and his makeup, his hair, the way he's dressed, everything just works, he looks just as much of a psycho as he acts, you know, not some people on this list don't even look like psychos, some do, but when you're talking about a psycho, the Joker just has it, he looks like it and he acts like it to the maximum, very extreme, doesn't care about anything else apart from causing chaos, so unpredictable as well and the mental aspect of his uh, way of torturing people is so good, he turns the best of people into evil monsters and he does it so well, the guy is twisted, sick and he's everything I love about psychopaths, anything that involves a Joker, any movie, anything, I am there, Joker's one of my favourite characters in general ever, such a good villain and the portrayal in this film from Heath Ledger is unrivaled and probably will never be topped. <laughs> Number one is Javier Bardem's portrayal of Anton Chiquer in No Country for Old Men. Anyone who could have a haircut like that and look that terrifying and act that terrifying is doing something right. This performance is probably the closest we'll ever see of a portrayal of a psychopath. It's done so well. Just This guy is just cold-blooded dead behind the eyes, barely even makes any facial expressions, kills anyone without any remorse, couldn't care less about anyone apart from achieving his goal. He wants that money, 
he's getting that money. He doesn't care who goes through him. It could be his mum. It could be anyone. He's killing him. The guy's insane. You know, the gas station scene in his dialogue with characters. Any character that comes onto the screen are instantly shitting themselves. This guy is so scary. He sucks the life out of people and his just his presence is so intimidating. Any character in No Country for Old Men, if they're in any vicinity of this guy, they're shitting themselves because he's going to kill you. No, he's not even going to talk. He's just going to kill you. No other reason. You know, you can't, you can't swear this guy. You can't convince this guy. Nothing will convince him. He'll just kill you. He's just that cold-blooded and sick. And Javier Bardem more than deserved his Oscar for this. He absolutely smashes it so far out of the park. It's laughable, really. It's such a good performance. It's such a good film. I love No Country for Old Men as a film, too. But this performance is just ridiculous. Such a good psychopath. Cold-blooded, calculating. Just dead behind the eyes, willing to kill anyone. He's just insane. Javier Bardem is just unrecognisable in this. You just, you don't think it's Javier Bardem at all. He's just, he's Anton Chikur, that's it. He's lost in this character, immersed in this character. He is that character. Um, it's just so well done. And guys, this is my favourite performance from anyone who's done any sort of psychopathic character it's just done so well and it will take a very very good performance to top this one guys please let me know down below your list and your favorite performances of movie psychopaths um, i love to read your comments and i love to reply to your comments and i just like to talk about movies in general um, anyway i've been movie matthew and um, like subscribe just do whatever you want guys this has been the movie matthew channel and i will see you next week on my next video.